We're going to start the broadcast off with an unforgettable story about travelers. This is a story few people have heard. It begins with a passenger jet in grave danger. And the passengers on board relying on a pilot's skill to save them. All of this unfolds, mind you, over a major metropolitan area with cameras rolling and the passengers on board desperate to reach loved ones on their cell phones. Now, if you're thinking of Denzel Washington and the movie Flight, if you're thinking of the heroism of Sully Sullenberger in real life, keep that in mind as you watch this. Tonight, Lester Holt starts us off with a story of profound courage and determination. The images are indelible, even four years later. An airliner with both engines out splashes down in the icy Hudson River. And thanks to the heroic airmanship of Captain Sully Sullenberger, everyone gets out alive. But imagine an even bigger airliner carrying even more passengers attempting a similar landing on a hard runway. It was an unprecedented incident in the annals of aviation. I'm just saying to myself, okay, you know, get ready, get ready, get ready, you know, you know bracing for impact. The story began just 10 miles away from that miracle on the Hudson at Newark Airport. It was Halloween night, 2011. 231 passengers and crew, many of them Americans, were about to board Lot Polish Airlines Flight 16, bound for Warsaw. In the cockpit of the wide-body Boeing 767, Captain Tad Vrona was focused on the safety of the transatlantic flight. The ground maintenance crew told him the aircraft was good to go. It looks good, so we are ready to, to taxi and to take off. Flight 16 took off from Newark Airport just after 10 p.m. Soon after, there was an indication of a malfunction with one of the hydraulic systems. But with two backups, there was no cause for concern. The flight over the ocean was smooth as silk, turbulence free. That night, it was unusually uh, smooth. But just minutes before the scheduled landing, all of that would change. It was then that business class passenger Greg Cohen noticed flight attendants racing in and out of the cockpit. The head flight attendant, you could just see, you know, all the color out of his face. You know, he was pale, white as a ghost. You know, you could cut the tension with a knife. Then the word came over the PA. This is actual video taken by a passenger on the flight. Emergency in Warsaw. The plane would be making an emergency landing. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you that you have to have a seatbelt fastened. I actually called over the flight attendant and I asked, I said, what, what does this mean? The only thing that they said to me was, we think we're going to make it to our destination. We think we're going to make it to our destination. Yes. Crew members were purposely giving no details. Despite their professional demeanor, they were frightened themselves. Flight attendant Magda Gortat had 17 years experience. I couldn't breathe, actually. Nobody had to tell me that it's, we have a really problem, a serious problem. I knew it. Even more serious than she knew. This is a twin of the 767 in jeopardy as seen on the ground. You can see the landing gear, the wheels, which support all the weight of the 280,000 pound giant. But on flight 16, the emergency was that all three landing gear, the wheels for the Boeing 767, would not go down. Captain Vrona realized he had only about an hour and 20 minutes worth of fuel to figure out what to do. The wide body jet might have to crash land on its belly. And without gear, there are no brakes. It's a very dangerous situation. We have probably have a serious problem. As the plane circled Warsaw, residents took pictures from the ground. In these photos, you can plainly see the gear were not lowered. Landing a plane without its wheels, an airliner belly flop, would be a life or death proposition. No 767 had ever done this before. When it attempted to land at the Warsaw Airport, the airliner could bounce and break up, or cartwheel and turn into a fireball, or it might not stop. As the cockpit crew tried to troubleshoot the problem with about 50 minutes worth of fuel remaining, in the cabin there was a growing realization something had gone seriously wrong. Passenger Andres Pino. I saw one of the stewards 
rip down the curtains which uh, separate different compartments. And I said, well, that's serious, then. That's not a game. Then, with about 40 minutes to go... I looked out the window, and I saw F-16s, um, you know, like around our plane. Polish Air Force F-16s were scrambled to take a look at the plane's underbelly up close to see if they could determine the problem. I'm not a very nervous kind of person, but as things started to unfold, I definitely, even I started to get a little nervous. And you decided to, to, to text your wife? Yes, yes. With about 20 minutes to go, Greg Cohen got a cell phone signal as they circled Warsaw. What was your thought process when you picked up the phone? God forbid if the wrong thing happens here, you know, and I didn't reach out to my wife and family and tell them how much I love them and how much I care about them. I mean, it just would be you know, terrible. He texted what he feared might be his last message. We are making an emergency landing. I think we will be okay. I love you and thank God for you and our children. I'm sorry to text you this, but I love you so much. And back in New Jersey, his wife Michelle couldn't believe what she was seeing on her phone. I, I broke down when I read it and I immediately started crying and I got a little sick. He's sending a message that someone sends who doesn't think they're going to make it. Yeah. So this was, I mean, just stunning to, to receive this. Stunning. She texted her husband back. You know, I told him just in case, you know, what I wanted to tell him. What was that? That he's given me the best life and the best children, and, and I love him. And amazingly, Greg got that reassuring message as he tried to reassure those around him. The woman next to me didn't speak English. She was Polish, you know, and I went to hold her hand and try to comfort her. There were a lot of people who were just very quiet and praying. Uh, you know, there were people who were crying. By about 10 minutes before landing, fire trucks moved into place and ambulances arrived at the airport from the center of Warsaw. And while the plane was still in flight, live TV coverage across Poland showed the path of the holding pattern while the crew tried to fix the problem. In the cockpit, the minutes flew by, but they seemed like an eternity to the passengers. It was especially tense because just 18 months earlier, Poland's president and 95 other prominent citizens had died in the crash of the president's plane on a trip to Russia. Passenger Andres Pino couldn't get the images of the gruesome TV coverage out of his mind. You were thinking about that tragedy oh, even, yes. even as you're preparing for oh, this yes. emergency. Oh, yes. That has a big influence on my imagination. I did put my passport behind my shirt on my chest. To a, a identify your body. Yeah, yeah. If, if this ended badly. Yeah. yeah. I was ready for the worst, hoping for the best. And the flight attendants knew that the fuel and time were running out. But we do it or not. We have to do it. It was uh, the longer five minutes in my life, actually. During those last five minutes, Captain Vrona gave up hope of somehow lowering the gear. He made a final calculation. They would have just one chance to touch the runway. Captain Vrona would have to somehow land the plane with the engines acting like the runners of a sled on a foam down runway. If something went wrong, he couldn't attempt to go around again. The engines would be too damaged and he knew all too well of another danger. There was a highway just at the end of the runway. It was a very dangerous moment for us to stop the plane, not to lose the runway, and to allow the plane to slide outside the airfield. The last thing I remember is just, you know, for, for us to brace for landing and brace for impact. That was head down your head between your legs. What happened next was captured by multiple cameras, both inside and outside. Images that will go down in aviation history. In the first part of Lester Holt's report here tonight, the landing gear on a 767 widebody flying from Newark to Warsaw refuses to come down. No one had ever tried an emergency landing with this aircraft in precisely this condition before. 
Some of the passengers realize just how dire the situation is, including an American named Greg Cohen, who sends a final goodbye to his wife and children on his cell phone. Here now, Lester Holt resumes his report. In the skies over Warsaw, Lot Polish Airlines Flight 16, with 231 on board, was just seconds away from attempting an emergency landing like no other. Across Poland, millions of viewers were watching the drama unfold on live television. And as the plane descended over the city, residents ran out to take photos. Captain Tad Vrona had spent the last hour and 20 minutes trying to lower the wide-body 767's landing gear, all of its wheels and its braking system, but to no avail. And he had no choice but to belly flop the plane with its engines acting like the runners of a sled onto a concrete runway. As you can see in this actual video shot inside the cabin, in the final moments, the passengers were ready for the worst. Air traffic controllers wish the captain good luck. And in the last few seconds, he turned to his co-pilot, just in case. I said to my first officer, I am happy that we are together. And I said, thank you. And we shake hands, I thank you. Like the other passengers, Greg Cohen had his head between his legs. What were the final instructions b before the landing? Well, they had us get in ready position, you know, and they were telling us to brace for impact. You know, praying to God that everything was going to be okay. And I'm just saying to myself, okay, you know, get ready, get ready, get ready, you know, you know bracing for impact. And then it happened. Flight 16 touched down at more than 140 miles an hour. This is the moment of contact on the runway, shot from inside the cabin. And then we touched down, and the impact never came. You know, I was waiting for this, you know, like car crash to be in an accident. No bounce? Yeah, I have to be honest, it was one of the smoothest landings I've ever had. Incredibly, it was a smooth touchdown. A miracle in Warsaw. You know, the plane came to a stop, and everybody you know, roared with applause, but it didn't last more than two seconds. You had uh, the flight attendant immediately stand up and just yell, get off this plane now. Suddenly, there was another danger. There was smoke and a fire on the right side engine. Flight attendant Magda Gortak yelled at the top of her lungs. Get off, get up, get off to the exit. Because I was sure that, that it's going to explode in a moment. This is actual video of the evacuation from on board the plane. Passengers rushed for the emergency slides, and a few fell as they tried to run away. But emergency crews were able to douse the flames and the fuel leak quickly. The plane didn't explode, and except for a few scrapes and bruises, everyone got off unharmed. Didn't really hit me until I was off the plane. And that's when, you know, I really got emotional. That's when it hit me like, oh my God, you know, what could have been? Greg called Michelle the moment he was clear of the plane. I was just so happy he was on the ground and, you know, I heard his voice crack, which, you know, his voice never cracks. Really? I appreciate, you know, being with my kids a little bit more and try to take a little extra time for the important things in life because, look, it could all be gone in a second. And as for the pilot who got the flight down safely, Captain Vrona became a Polish national hero. And in America, he was honored for saving 231 lives. We caught up with the captain at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. We just did our job. I am not hero. But Americans on board Flight 16 begged to differ, comparing him to the hero of the miracle on the Hudson. I immediately I thought that our captain was Poland's version of Sully. Same incredible amount of airmanship. Yes. What, what would you like to say to Captain Rona? 
I want to say thank you. You know, if it wasn't for him, maybe 230 plus people wouldn't be here right now. And you know, I'm forever indebted to him for that. Incredible story. Our thanks to Lester Holt for that. And by the way, the investigation into what went wrong is still going on. There's more information about that on our website.